family. This is Sports Life Talk South with dresses, insulted pretzels, and your host this evening, Ms. El Paso. Buenos dias, buenas noches. Baby, we are kicking it off with episode 71. It's awesome, baby. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Amazing. Oh, I, I feel all the enthusiastic awesomeness coming from Brit today. I know. I'm I'm here for it. I'm here. Man, I'm not going to lie. I am tired, dehydrated, and have all that allergies. So, <laughs> literally, it's only 30 minutes because I don't know that I'd last much longer. We got Coach mm-hmm. on the chat asking us when we got our new intro. Well, someone named Coach made it. Oh, yeah. And I'm loving it. It gives me all the feels. Maybe that's why Brittany's a little, like, chill on the on the chill box because she's like... I was like feeling that music, man. I mean, it's for real a vibe and makes me want to do dirty things after we get off the podcast. (laughs) Okay, Elena, before we go into what we're doing, (laughs) let us know why are you dehydrated and exhausted? Well, I had a two-day event for St. Patty's Day at Keneally's Irish Pub. Shout out to Monica Miss Sheila and Mary, her sister, the family killed. Like it was the most epic St. Patty's Day party ever on Friday. And then we had great crawfish on Saturday. Saturday was a little light on the crowd, but it was freezing cold. And I think everybody had partied too hard the night before, honestly. And day before, I mean, people started rolling in about one o'clock. It opened at noon and I excused myself probably around 9.30 p.m. because I had been there since 11.30. And then last night, we had circle chair sessions. House Tiger played. Yeah. Yes. Hyphen and Drew Mitchell. They were absolutely amazing. Super cool vibe. For the first time ever, I had a full band in the house. It was like, what, five? Five people? Full band. Yeah. Five-piece band. Yeah, and they had uh, Brielle that sang a few songs with them, House Tiger did, and she did an amazing job. And then I found out, okay, this is my last comment, that (laughs) John's daughter, the lead singer of House Tiger, is the new lead singer of the Monicas that played on Friday. And I did not know that on Friday. So when he was like, did you know that was my daughter up there? What? And then I looked at his face and I went, oh my gosh, that is your daughter. You have the same face. Who's the prettier one? She's probably the prettier one. Absolutely. And she, she, (laughs) well, um, great new addition to the Monica's with Ed on lead guitar and the new lead singer. She was awesome. I love it. Hey, Ken. Ken, the bass player. Yes. All right, ladies, what are we drinking tonight? Okay, I'll start. Hi, yo. Again, because why not? And remind the remind the people what Hayo has. Hayo, it has vitamins. Vitamins. It doesn't actually have real shrooms in it, but that's it doesn't. It has lion's mane mushrooms and like normal ashwagandha (laughs) and another type of mushroom extract in here. Coach is having another Snapple. Okay. Definitely a diet Snapple. Yes. Diet Snapple this time. Diet green tea. Yeah, right. I, I'm drinking agua just because I had some wine last night and I need to I need to chill out. I need and to- from what I hear, that one was like superb because y'all were like, oh my God, this wine, this wine, this wine. Yes. Shout out to Hyde, uh, Napa Valley Vineyard. Yum. And- Interesting thing about Hyde is that they used to just grow for the winemakers and now they're making their own wine, but it's always been, a lot of winemakers have always used their grapes and their crops. So good Mm. job. Uh, What was was the name again? The name of the wine? Hyde. H-Y-E-E. Yeah. So good job, Hyde. Putting Elena on her hide. <laughs> you like that? Okay. It's so punny. <laughs> I am drinking, and it's clear, so it's like, look. So it's called Lagunitas Hoppy Refresher. Sure. This is 
Yeah. Now, alcohol, and it tastes, it says sparkling hop water. And pretty much what this tastes like is um, like a, a white claw, but just unflavored. So it's like unflavored white claw. Nice little seltzer. Yes. Cheers. 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 Raider Nation's on the chat. What is happening, my man? I want to know who Cool Kev, Coach, and Baseball Traveler have winning the men and women's Final Four, because we are going to get into that. But I want to see it start popping up on the comments. Oh, yeah. Let us know. Let us know. But now it's time for Fact Check Against the Glass. And today's, <laughs> today's topic is unknown or weird colleges, universities. Who would like to start? Okay, I'll start. I'll start. Oh, ooh, <laughs> Lainey's going to start. Okay. You can start. I don't care. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Hamburger University <laughs> <laughs> is in Oak Brook, Illinois. And it's exactly what you think it is. It is literally a McDonald's international university solely based on training management prospects. The classes go from franchise protocols and teaches students leadership skills, blah, 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 blah. But really, like, they learn to make Big Macs, I guess. But <laughs> after graduation, you get a Bachelor of Hamburgerology. Stop. I'm not kidding that, and it actually translates into business management, like credits, you know, other places, but not hospitality. No, it doesn't say that. I want to go to that school. I, um, that surprised me that it's in Illinois because uh, McDonald's corporate office is in Chicago. Oh. Well, there you go. So um, China's division is regarded as the most competitive. Yeah. <laughs> Very like, cool. So if you live in China and want to work for McDonald's and get your hamburgerology degree, that's the top one. You have to be the top 1% to get into the hamburger university. Well, I'm going to hamburger university and then I'm applying to Troll Burger. Troll okay. Burger. Yes. Shout out to Bun B. What's up with Trill Burger? I haven't had one. Have you had one? No. That's, I'm like, I wish I would have gone during the rodeo, but they told me that it wasn't that great at the rodeo. They said it was, it's better when he does it. Like when it's really like done, not for the masses like that. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to wait till he has his brick and mortar off of, I believe it's Kirby or Shepard, somewhere around there. He's, he, that's where Trill Burger is going to be. Yeah. Oh, close to Elena. Yeah, we can walk yes, there. close to Elena. We can walk there. I'm gonna put that on my Airbnb. Be like, you can walk to Pearl Burger. Maybe. Yeah. Meet Are they right. gonna have booze? Because we know you won't walk there without the booze. Oh, you know I won't. I'll Uber there. I'll see y'all there. We'll see you there. Yeah, pretty much. I'll well, I'll yeah. stay in line for you guys, and then you guys can get there and cut. Perfect. That's what we like. <laughs> I like right. those blue lines, you know. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. She's sweetie style. Okay. And she doesn't do gen pop. No. Uh, mine is a place called Trabajo Ya. And this is located in Valencia, Spain, because prostitution is legal in Spain. And there's a school for it. Opened in May 2012, the school faced legal trouble for those who were biased against professional sex workers. But a judge threw that out, and their cases have no bias. So go to Trabajo Ya if you want to be a professional sex worker. And you know what Trabajo Ya translates to, right? Job now? Work. Yeah, work now. Yeah. Work now? Yeah. Love that. Um, mine's so boring compared to you guys. I failed at this assignment. Like, Well, coach, coach said he needs to try them and then check it, please. I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody signed up for classes at Trabajo Ya. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like we just keep adding on to the terrible stuff that we say every single week. Um, all right, my mine is it's like, look, if you're a liberal arts college, 
you're up there. Like it's always a liberal arts college, right? Yeah. yeah. And this one was just interesting. It wasn't cool. Like, well, I mean, I guess it's kind of cool, but uh, Bard College at Simon's Rock is in Western Massachusetts, the town of Great Barrington. Of course, that's in Massachusetts. And it's the only accredited four-year college that offers a degree that you do not have to graduate high school and you don't have to take the SAT or ACT to get into. So you can start college at like 10th or 11th grade. You can be like, you know what? High school is not for me. I'm going straight to the U. And there are, I mean, there, I think there was like an eight or nine-year-old that actually got admitted. Wow. Loogie Hauser really famous people that are alum from, from the school that I had never heard of until I started looking up weird schools. Mm -hmm. uh, Steely, part of Steely Dan, the classic rock band went there. Chevy Chase. Is an wow. alum. Um, one of the Beastie Boys, Gia Coppola and Tom Ford. Interesting. Wow. wow. And then there's a bunch of famous, you know, really successful CEOs and, and traders and things like that as well. But uh, yeah, liberal arts colleges are where it's at. I don't know what that was. Also, definitely want to give a shout out to any university that has a golf course, either affiliated with them or on their campus. Um, Purdue University's golf course is actually ranked number one, and I have played it. I played. Was it was it a nice course to play on? It was a nice course at the time. I didn't know it was number one college course to play, um, but yeah, it was fun. It was definitely fun to play. Great course, beautiful greens and and fairways. Um, and then um, yeah. So anyway, shout out shout out to the schools that have the golf course. Ohio State has one too. I don't yeah. know if it's on, is it on campus, Buckeye Britt, or is it just affiliated with the. Uh, it's like close enough. It's hard because Ohio State's downtown, like are you know, like right in the middle of the city, but it's basically like right off campus. Okay. Yeah, that's how they have, it's the they have a scarlet and a gray course. It's a nice course too. Play both. MSU also has a golf course. I've never been to it, but I hear it's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> we have all that farmland too. That's true. Yeah, it's all the Midwestern schools. Shocker. Yeah. All right, let's get to the NCAA bracket. Let's start with the men's. Well, how are you feeling about this? Oh. <laughs> well, I mean, some schools I picked are still there, but others are not. Mm, okay, so who are your let's, – let's do this really quick. We're going to do rapid fire for men's. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Okay. Alabama versus San Diego State. Alabama. Alabama. Creighton versus Princeton. Creighton. Creighton. FAU versus Tennessee. 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 Kansas State versus Michigan State. Michigan State. State. Yeah. All right. Uh, UCLA versus right. Gonzaga. Gonzaga. <laughs> no, I have UCLA. UCLA. Okay. Arkansas versus UConn. 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 Uh, Atlanta? UConn. UConn? Xavier versus Texas. Texas. Xavier. Houston versus Miami. Houston, Houston. even though I think Miami's going to win. Houston. All right. I mean, we're um, in this year for a reason, you know? It's the only Houston shirt I got. All right. If you were to put who's going to the final, we're going to skip the final four. If you were to go straight to who's going to the final, who would it be? Michigan State okay. and Houston. Oh. I've got Alabama, Houston. Oh, I hate I don't have. I mean, I have Houston winning one of my brackets. My brackets are such shit. I'm in like 10th or 12th place on every single bracket. My party school bracket didn't fare me well. So, because <laughs> it's, I mean, who you can't pick Princeton as part of your party, your party <laughs> school. That's like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Definitely not going to happen. Um, Okay, so or yeah, so okay, so let's move on to the women's rapid fire. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Notre Dame versus Maryland. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. UCLA versus South Carolina. South Carolina. South Carolina. Ole Miss versus Louisville. 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 <laughs> Colorado versus Iowa. 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 
Ohio State versus Ohio Utah. State. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tennessee versus Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech. Miami versus Villanova. Villanova. Oh, okay. LSU versus Utah. Utah. Oh, okay. We got a split on that. Let me just give a straight up shout out to Haley. And the nickname is Van Lethal when her real name is Haley Van Leet. She played Texas um, just recently and um, scored 22 points in that game. Oh, and no, she scored 21 points on that game, but they beat Texas by 22. And at the end, there was a certain player who pretty much stopped her as she was getting the good job, you know, good game, stopped yeah. her, mouthed something to her. You see Haley grab her hand and push it away and continue down the line. Like, girl, I ain't got time for that. Later wow. in her interview, she tells everyone, you know what? Everybody gets a little chippy, you know, when we play, but I ain't got no you know, problems with Texas. You know, we had a good game. It is what it is. And we're moving on. And I had to go back and research her and say, who the hell taught her this whole, like, you know, you keep your, your head up and you don't, you know, don't pay attention to those haters. And during my research, I found out that she played on Kobe's team in L.A. The mom, like the, um, the mama. basketball mamas. Yeah, she was on the team. And so she was coached by him, which made 100%, 100% sense on why she reacted that way. What are your yeah. thoughts? Wait, did she push the hand away or did she get her hand pushed away? Sorry. She pushed, she pushed the other girls. Like the girl stopped her and she was looking, you know, she grabbed her like, like, oh yeah, good game. Like we're about to like really have a good conversation. And the girl said something. I think I read, mouth read, I'm going to beat that ass. And I saw her go like, like, and she like, cause she had her like that. And she, the other girl had her, you know, her hand like this. And she, she leaned in and she was like something, something. And then she was like, I'm going to beat that ass. And she was like, man, girl, get out of here. And they kept high fiving everybody. She's a oh. beast. Well, guess what? You didn't. You got your ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I thought you were saying like after the game, they were like, you know, doing their good game, good game, good game. And she pushed the hand away. I was like, that's not a good sports. Oh, good yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. Yeah. Some, no. Girl, came, it was some girl sport. came at her. Okay. I got it now. I got it. I did not see that. I did watch a few of the women's games. I saw the Hoosiers get that ass beat, um, which made me happy. But um, yeah, I don't cheer. You know, I, I actually, I think in my work bracket, they told me I had Indiana winning. And I said, there is no way that I had Indiana. And then pick that. I would have never picked the Purdue bags or the Hoosiers. So I got to go back and look. I don't even know. My bracket's so busted that I'm confused. It's like just red everywhere. Hurts my eyes. Um, but, you know, but I feel like this nice. NCAA bracket season for both men and women has been the most entertaining because there have been some close, close games. And either it's a call that was, you know, a missed call or something, but it has been so good to watch. And I'm sure, Elena, for you this weekend, you know, hanging out and being out and having fun, it was hard to, like, concentrate when you're looking yeah. and you're like, wait, they're beating them by two points right now? What's happening? Yeah, it was tough this weekend to catch as many games as I wanted to. But I will tell you, when it came, like, Monday, I was like, thank goodness there aren't any more games until Thursday. <laughs> because right. it was like game after game after game. And I was trying to catch, like you said, the end of games. I left on Saturday to make sure that I caught Houston's game um, because I was just like, I won't be able. I, I started it at the bar at Keneally's and then I went home to finish it because I couldn't concentrate and I wanted to really watch that game. So, well, I am going to call this right now. I think that the game to watch for whatever reason, I just feel it in my soul and maybe I'm wrong. I think UCLA Gonzaga is going to be a really good, good game. Mm -hmm. But I could be wrong. But I really feel like those two going um, up against each other is going to be pretty good to watch. Yeah, and for the second time, a 16 beat number one. That's our FDU, Fairleigh Dickinson. Beating the Purdue bags. Sorry, cuz. I know you're in our friend bracket and you had Purdue winning and it busted. Um Shout out to my cousin in San Diego. I love you, Amy. Um, yeah, she's from Indiana, so 
whatever. Brittany, you got any any games that you're excited about watching? Um, I always like to watch Gonzaga play, and I always like to watch Creighton play. They're Love they're Creighton. always Creighton always just has just such a good presence in the NCAA tournaments. And, and it's like a lot of where people, in Nebraska? Yeah, oh, right. Like what? Where like somewhere around, it's somewhere around Omaha, but yeah. I don't know where. I'm super jazzed for Notre Dame women's game that's coming up. I think it's the 25th. I cannot. Wait. I mean, like their coach is so hype. I love watching her and the players. I don't have them in my final four, but I definitely hope that they get there. I think for mine, it's going to be Tennessee versus Virginia Tech. I don't know why. I'm just choosing that. <laughs> I'm just choosing that. <laughs> it sounds right. good. It sounds I mean, good. I definitely will be glued to the TV for Houston's games on, on the men's because, oof, tough, tough competition coming up. And they looked like trash their first game. Sorry, Absolutely Houston. trash. The, not the do only, it. Play down to their level. And we need to have a conversation about it. Um, not, I mean, we, I mean, Houston, the Houston team and I need to have a conversation about it <laughs> because I'm still upset from that first game. Yeah. Well, like, they should have lost that game. I was, we were setting up sound next door and, and, uh, Christopher Thornton, the front runners, Chris Thornton, um, was setting up my sound and I was just cussing at the TV while watching him set up my sound. I wasn't doing anything. Well, for those who are planning to come down to Houston for the Final Four, I would advise you right now to go and get your tickets. I actually went to try to get one, and they're pretty decent. Um, if you're looking at the semifinals or an all-package inclusive thing, um, if you go to the NRG website, there's an official um, NCAA uh, uh, ticket package, which includes open bar for beer and wine. It's in the 300 club section level. And they're going for about $500 to $700. And I believe that if that's going to be for two games. So if you're going for two games for the semifinal or two games for the finals, like it's Friday and Saturday. So they range from about $500 to $700. Obviously, for the ones that are in the 100 section, which are down um, closer to the state, uh, to the floor, you're going to find it to be about 1000 something. That's actually a great deal with the wine and the beer because I heard that nosebleed was like $600 a ticket already. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. If you can go, I know a lot of people go to Ticketmaster, but I'm telling you go to the NRG website and look for those ticket packages and they're pretty legit. There's even one that got sold out where you got to meet some um, NBA legends and take a picture with the trophy and it was like VIP. It was, it was pretty good. And that one I think was running... I heard from someone it was about fifteen hundred dollars, so it's not bad. And even if you decide to resell them, please don't do that. But if you decide to resell it, you know you can make some pretty good money off of it. Good pro tip, I love it. Sweetie Simon is here for that pro tip. <laughs> All right, well let's talk about pro tip right now with the celebrity gossip because the tip is that Joe Cole, J Cole, was smoking out of it. What do I mean by that? He was smoking cigarettes when he was six years old. He was on a podcast by um, a podcast called Lead by Example. He said he, he took his first tobacco puffs at six years old, trying to impress the older kids. Later, his older brother told his mom and he got the ass whooping of his life and never hit that cigarette again. So for those who are trying to get it, um, ooh, okay. For those who are trying to do you hear that? Or is it just me? I hear it. Maybe oh, it's good. Well, you're good. Okay. Well, um, so if you're trying to quit smoking cigarettes, holler at your mom, get the ass whooping and <laughs> okay. The weekend. Okay, so actually, who do you think who do you think is the Guinness World Record for being the most popular artist in the planet? On the planet? Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Prince. No, right now it's the weekend. Oh he God. has been, he just got put in the Guinness World of Records for being the most popular um, artist on the planet. He broke two new records on Spotify, one for the most monthly listeners on Spotify history by breaching 111 million mark, another for being the first artist to breach 100 million monthly listeners mark in general. In 2020, the track Blindly Lights 
is also the biggest song ever achieving the most Spotify streams. And it's also the longest charting song on the Billboard Hot 100 of all time with a total of 90 weeks on the chart. I am not. Yes. <laughs> I was shocked. And lastly, there's a big cock in town and his name is Roy Culkin. He is getting all the raves on the new Amazon Prime series, Swarm. Apparently, um, there is a, a scene where he's butt naked and he has his thing all out and people are giving him a lot of praise and they're like, whoa. And others are saying it was 100% unnecessary to put that scene in. Regardless, I'm putting it on my watch list tonight. For sure. And but are we sure it's not a stunt double? Um, I, from the still on TMZ, it looks like it's all of him and a bowl of cherries. <laughs> I'm just not, not lying. That's coach. It's not me tonight. It's Ms. El Paso. Okay, it's not me tonight. <laughs> I'm just giving you the celebrity gossip. But thank goodness my section is over. Why? Because I need some money for trabajo. Yeah, for my wish. <laughs> Hello, Eric. Hi. Nettle. What? Can't tell us how to make money. Oh, um. <laughs> how to make money. First bet, Michigan State minus two over Kansas State. Michigan State has a guard advantage. Izzo has shown us throughout the tournament. He takes the other team's best player away. I think it's going to be Kendall Johnson or um, Noel. So I think Kansas State's going to struggle offensively. The way Kansas State plays D, it leads a lot to open look threes. Michigan State shot 38.7% from three. That was eighth best in the country. So I think they'll get some open looks. Uh, there's a shot. There's this website I use called, use called Shot Quality. So it kind of looks to see like what team is overperforming, what team is underperforming. By far, Kansas State is overperforming the most in the, in the tournament. They should have lost to Montana State. They should have lost to Kentucky. So I, shooting regression is due for them. Izzo has a huge coaching advantage, and Izzo in the round of 16 is 66% against the spread. Um, next one is Miami plus seven. With Miami's backcourt, this is just way too much. The way they're going to move the ball around the perimeter, it's going to lead to some open shots. Houston's backcourt is banged up, so we really don't know what to expect from uh, Sneed and Salzer. Also, Amir showed he is elite rebounding, so he should be able to limit Houston's second chance points. And just with the way Miami is able to get points and waves, they should be able to stay within the number. They are the team with the highest, with the most amount of pen in a row. Okay, so I'm Eric, let me ask you this. You look stressed out. Does it kind of more stress you out? What? Is this like a really hard, like, there's so many games happening that you're like, I'm not sleeping at night? Well, A, I don't sleep as is. I've eliminated caffeine. And, yeah. So, yeah. I got a lot going on. Well, you'll have some vacation, my friend. It's gonna, it's coming up soon. You got one more month. One month. I don't one know if I would call a trip with us vacation. I just hope I don't die. That's my goal. I call it vacation. <laughs> yes. We are not going a, on vacation. vacation for the normal folk. <laughs> for the norm, normal folk. Let me give this story out really quick. So um, I, I forgot who it was. There was a team that won in the bracket that I wasn't expecting. And I wrote it in our group chat like, oh, my God, I can't believe this person won. Or this group, this, this team won. And Eric was like, well, had you looked at my podcast or my um, Instagram page, you would have seen that I chose them and you would have made some money. And it was like, what, plus 210 or something like that? Yeah, Furman. You're talking yeah. about Furman. Yeah. Furman. Yeah. Furman. So guess what, guys? If you don't watch his show and you don't, like, follow him, you will lose out on some big bank. That would have been huge, a huge, huge game for somebody. Not and the bracket bragging rights. <laughs> and I mean, I don't, I don't mean to brag, but I did nine future t future bets. Eight of the nine are still in the tournament, so I'm in a pretty good. Wow, level house on Eric. 
So. Yeah. Well, there you go. If you're not watching tonight, you want to stay broke like a povo. Look at that. Baseball travelers. He's, he's got your back. E, he said, he also said that Fairleigh Dickinson would do well last week too. Somebody's watching. Yes. That, guy, that coach left today too. So they're going to go back to being nothing, unfortunately. Ah, oh, that always happens oh. when you're at the top. Um, yep. Eric, what, Money. what you got going on tonight? Let people know. Uh, my boy David's going on, and we're going to talk about every game and what bets to lock in and everything. Ooh, okay, so Over. this is the time, guys. Eric has been staying up and working his butt off just so that you guys can make this easy money. You got to go watch him on this podcast tonight. Nine. Yeah. Nine. 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 Cool, yep. Kevin, wants to know if you put your picks on Twitter, E. I do. Yep. On Twitter, yeah. And where, where, where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, Etoff21. Etoff21. There you go. Cool, Kev. Check it out for sure. All right. Take us out, Elena. All right. Well, first player's anthem, I just want to say it's because we talked about Steely Dan. It's Ricky Don't Lose My Number because Sweetie Simon wants to know. You get those sweet tickets for Final Four in Houston. Don't lose my number. <laughs> but too. we had a great show tonight. Thank you for everyone on the chat, especially Coach, ETOF21 Sports. We got Ken. We got Cool Kev rocking with us with us tonight. Make sure you follow Dresses and Salted Pretzels on Instagram, Sports Life Talk on Instagram. Subscribe on YouTube. Tell your friends to subscribe. Tell your mother's lover's brother's son to subscribe on YouTube. Follow ETOF21 Sports. Make sure you watch Eric's show tonight and Ms. El Paso on Instagram. And we will see you all next week when I get back from Mexico. Adios! Yeah.